Wuthering Waves aired a special livestream that finally announced the game's launch date, May 22nd, 2024. But that's not all. Trailers, reveals, and updates were sprinkled throughout. To begin with, an extremely hype cinematic trailer was debuted, featuring Yang Yang, Chisya, Baichu, and Jian as they fight back against the threat of a tacit field. The music here was just perfect, and if you haven't checked it out yet, you definitely should. If this is the caliber of music we can expect for the final version of the game, I am so ready. Honestly, the music in CBT2 was so lackluster that it makes me speculate that they were holding a lot of it back. Dong, the game's lead developer, took center stage during this broadcast to explain the progress Wuthering Waves has made since the end of its second and final closed beta. He stated that before CBT2 even began, the team had already started fixing some of the issues people were concerned about. This really adds fuel to my theory that the devs simply did not have enough time to improve certain systems for the CBT2 build thanks to some major overhauls. Nevertheless, this is a pretty good indication that the devs are further along in development than it may have seemed. The number one thing players were concerned about in CBT2 was the Echo System, the feature that lets you catch monsters and equip them. It was too grindy, too RNG dependent, but showed a lot of promise. Fortunately, Dung revealed that changes will be made to reduce the grind and improve the experience of collecting and upgrading Echoes. It was impossible to recycle Echoes previously, so they're adding a data merge feature which will allow you to convert Echoes you don't need into new ones. Data merge looks pretty interesting. In the example shown, five green rarity Echoes were sacrificed in order to create one purple rarity Echo and two gold rarity Echoes. I'm holding out hope that they'll also include a bulk recycling option for quickly processing large batches of Echoes, because only being able to recycle five at a time would be miserable. In addition, Echo Tuners, which unlock substats, will be returned when tuned Echoes are consumed to level other Echoes. Tested fields weren't worth doing to obtain Echoes in CBT2, so they've been adjusted to give greater rewards, and the cooldown for rechallenging them will be reduced as well. Hopefully, there'll be a fun, useful way to mix up echo farming now. Phantom Echoes are Withering Waves' equivalent of shiny Pokémon, and many players lamented that their stats were just as random as any other echo, meaning they usually weren't worth using. I was pretty surprised by how Kuro Games is addressing this. Once you obtain a Phantom Echo, you can equip it as a skin on regular echoes of the same type. <laughs> what a wonderful feature! Don't worry, Dung specifically mentioned that they're adjusting the numbers too. Hopefully these changes include no more pink rarity echo drops once you've unlocked gold, because that felt real bad. Story was another big issue. The pacing at the start of the game was particularly brutal, and the animation quality wasn't always up to scratch. Before launch, Wuthering Waves will adjust its questlines, make quest chains represent the plot better, and improve details of story dialogue. Dung revealed that during the adjusted version of the main story, you might run into some unexpected surprises and we caught a glimpse of this creature that looks similar to the Crownless. Staging, lip movements, and expressions during cutscenes will be improved. The camera work was very undercooked previously, so this is a relief to hear. With all these changes, the game might feel brand new all over again. We got a small teaser for Yinlin's companion story, and I personally can't wait for that. I love the peek we got into her personality during CBT2. Here, she's described as a mysterious undercover agent with ambiguous morals, which is just my type of woman. And thank goodness, Kuro Games is also addressing the sound effects. Pretty much everything sounded weak and lackluster, and the sound balancing was a nightmare. The voices were so low by default that I had to turn everything but the voices down to 10%, and even then some attack sound effects were incorrectly attached to the voice volume so they'd blast your ears. <laughs> These obvious errors are being fixed, of course, but they are also improving the sound quality of the effects across the board. Here are some of the changes. Sí,
躲战场。这样用吗？这躲战场。这样用吗？ Really goes to show how important sound design is to game development. Doubly so in this case, since Wuthering Waves is a game themed around sound. Needless to say, both fixing and improving the sound will make the experience much more satisfying. Controller support was missing in CBT2, despite being seen in the Taipei Game Show demo, but they confirmed it's almost ready. Anytime I was playing the beta, all I could think about was how much better the experience would be on controller. Especially because I kept accidentally using my Resonance Liberation instead of the grapple, thanks to my tiny hands. Additionally, you'll be able to rebind hotkeys in the full version of the game if the defaults don't suit you. It remains to be seen whether we can customize the UI layout, but I certainly hope we can. Speaking of UI, the example they used here looks a lot more polished and less cluttered than the CBT2 UI. Along with cleaner aesthetics, there are far fewer icons in the top right, which is for the best. Dong also mentioned that they were making plenty of other changes that they didn't have time to talk about in detail. This includes improving the combat experience on various platforms and addressing feedback for depths of elusive realm, parallel perception, and other overworld and exploration mechanics. If that wasn't enough, they revealed a gameplay trailer which gave us a preview of many new English voices. The villain Scar sounds amazing. After all this effort. Do you truly want to throw it all away? And I look forward to everyone's performance. At the end, they announced the highly anticipated release date of May 22nd. But keep in mind that this is according to Pacific Time. The German and Chinese announcements state that the game will release May 23rd. So, in all likelihood, it's releasing simultaneously worldwide. Unfortunately for me, that means the European launch will probably be in the middle of the night. We also got confirmation that Wuthering Waves will be releasing on PC, Android, and iOS. Data will be shared across all platforms, so you can hop from one to the other. No console mention probably means that that's not happening anytime soon. Dong rounded out the live stream by leaving for an urgent mission, but then we got a look at what appears to be a new form of crownless, one with a more feminine appearance that actually has a crown, a crowned, if you will. Perhaps this is the same tacit discord we saw earlier, and the imposing figure on this new promotional artwork. But there are even more changes we can expect going forward, and in this video, you can learn about other exciting additions coming to the launch version of the game. Also, Rover murdered this turtle. 